hello out there welcome to this tutorial cumulative frequency curve is the topic it is also known as OGIF so we pick the first problem the weight loss in kilograms recorded by a therapist are as follow draw the cumulative frequency curve of the distribution and use it to estimate the median and semi interquartile range so we have the first column here which represents the weights and it is given in intervals so and the corresponding frequency is given in the second column so we need to take a look at a typical cumulative frequency curve so it is uh, upper class boundary against the cumulative frequency meaning the horizontal axis is the upper class boundary while the vertical axis is the cumulative frequency axis so we need two columns two additional columns to be added to our table that is the upper class boundary and the cumulative frequency column so we have a additional column the third column now becomes we have the cumulative frequency and the upper class boundary these are the two columns we need to draw a typical cumulative frequency curve so now the upper class the cumulative frequency of the first class interval is still 4 and the cumulative frequency of the next class interval is 4 plus 6 giving us 10 the next class interval has cumulative frequency of 10 plus 11 and that gives 21 then 21 plus 9 gives 30 which is the next cumulative frequency and uh, 30 plus 5 gives 35 35 plus 4 gives 39 and 39 plus 1 gives 40 so that means the population in this uh, distribution is 40 now we now get the upper class boundary the upper class boundary of the first class interval is the upper limit here plus the lower limit divided by 2 so 10 plus 11 divided by 2 gives 10.5 20 plus 21 divided by 2 gives 20.5 30 plus 31 divided by 2 gives 30.5 40 plus 41 divided by 2 gives 40.5 50 plus 51 divided by 2 gives 50.5 60 plus 61 divided by 2 gives 60.5 and 70 plus now 70 plus 71 divided by 2 gives 70.5 so we have gotten the necessary ingredients for our cumulative frequency curve so we are going to use these two columns so the two columns we are going to use so let's go it's our graph and uh, the table first we draw the horizontal axis which represents the upper class boundary and the vertical axis which represents the cumulative frequency and we calibrate them remember there should be a class interval before this and the upper class boundary of that class interval is 0.5 so we are going to recognize that one since that one is zero so that we can start from here 0 0.5 here is 10 10.5 20.5 30.5 40.5 50.5 60.5 and 70.5 so here we calibrate and make sure we have 40 at the top so doing that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Forty divided by eight gives me five. So each tick line here will be five units. So this is zero, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, 
35 and uh, 40 so that is the cumulative frequency for the graph so we now go ahead since the first point here is zero so we mark that one out we go to the next upper class boundary which has a cumulative frequency of four so the cumulative frequency this is each line is 0 0.5 so two lines will be one so this is four since one two will make five so this is four it is marked out 20.5 the cumulative frequency is 10 this is uh, 10 and uh, 30.5 the cumulative frequency is 21 so we have 21 to this is 21 here the next class boundary the next upper class boundary is 40.5 which is 30 very clear also 50.5 now is 35 so this is 35 here and 60.5 is 39 leaving one two downward this is 39 and finally the 70.5 is 40 so we have the cumulative frequency to the 40 we have uh, plotted the points now we join them so joining them we have this as the cumulative frequency curve also known as OGIF so the next thing is we're going to use this curve to estimate the median and before then we need to calibrate this into percentile divide it into 10 equal parts and each part represents 10% so that will give us the percentile axis so the easier way again to do that is since we have uh, 8 tick lines here divide by 2 gives 4 so 1, 2, 3, 4 this will give us the 50th percentile half of 50 is 25 so this will give us 25th percentile up here will give us 75th percentile and the top gives the hundred percentile now we go into the median the median is q2 and q2 is 50th percentile q2 since it is median we can just say okay median is the middle number the total population here is 40 40 divided by 2 gives 20 so we can just draw it here and read it downward but since we have taken a percentile as our method of getting the median which is q2 so we come to this 50 draw the line then where it touches the curve so we now draw to get the point of intersection from the curve and uh, that point will be read and be recorded as the estimated median so there are 10 lines here meaning each line is one unit and here remaining one line away from 30.5 so 30.5 minus 1 will give us 29.5 the 29.5 represents the median of this distribution now we go for the third quartile the third quartile also can be obtained from this cumulative frequency axis but we are going to use the percentile axis so which represent the 75th percentile we draw the line from 75th percentile to touch the curve then draw it to the upper class boundary axis and read so that will give us 40.5 that gives 40.5 so q1 which is the lower quartile or the first quartile we give us the 25th percentile also then we read draw the line again from 25th percentile to touch the curve 
and draw it downwards to the upper class boundary axis and read this is going to give us 20.5 now to calculate semi interquartile range semi interquartile range is a combination of interquartile range and the semi interquartile range itself so the interquartile range is q3 minus q1 uh, substitute and uh, solve but now that we have semi interquartile range we are going to divide it by 2 so therefore we have a uh, 40.5 minus 20.5 divided by 2 40.5 minus 20.5 gives 20 20 divided by 2 gives 10 so we have our semi interquartile range to be 10 this brings to the end of this tutorial thank you for watching this video remember to subscribe to our channel like this video goodbye